the hill fort we're going to today up there. There it is. That's where we're going. Here we are. Now, you don't know this, but we were here last week and it was interesting. It was very um, foggy. There was a big cloud, big cloud sitting all over the place. And we basically got the wrong hill fort. And now we're back and we think we know where to go this time. So we've got much better weather this time. We've got more of a view. Let's see, get the Wallace Monument there behind me. Wait, there it is. And uh, we'll definitely find the hill for it this time. But I inserted a clip of what happened last time we were here. We are still on the lookout for Dumiat. Hillfort, which we suspect is somewhere along those at that edge. I think it might be that over there. Oh, you think it's that little yeah. knobbly bit? Oh, it yeah. could well be. Somebody was living right there, probably well into the 18th or 19th century, because these are all leftovers from rectangular houses. And Stirling is this whole area there. That's Stirling Castle, Wallace Monument. And near the Wallace Monument was the Battle of Stirling Bridge. I think Stirling Bridge would have been roughly but somewhere down there. And basically the men uh, of William Wallace were waiting up there on the crag. So as the troop of Edward I were marching, they basically just swooped down on them from there. And it was quite a decisive win uh, for the Scottish people. That's why in the 19th century they added this big monument. But we have already made a video about it because we visited both Stirling Castle and we went for a walk around this wood and I'll also link it up in the cards because we detailed the whole history about the battle and about the castle in that video. Whoa. That is very, very steep. And here's a whole big house. It could have been just the one house with uh, some enclosure here right next to it. And there's a few more buildings right there that I've missed. Small building there. Alright, things took a bit of a turn. We were kind of on a, a narrow country road and we were sort of looking for the right road to go down. And I said something that distracted my partner and we basically went into a ditch and it took us, I think it took us half an hour to get out of it so we are here parked up. Car is safe, everything's fine. We basically had to go and find a door to put well, you on. You found a random door next to the I side. found a random door, that is, that is amazing because somebody, um, people obviously couldn't get past us so uh, they were suggesting that if we had a plank, we might be able to, you know, drive up on the plank or something. So I thought, we will try the rock. And then I just started looking around because we were about to phone the rescuing services. And um, I saw this door and I thought, well, it's like a last ditch effort, basically. So put the door underneath the wheel. There, there was um, two more people who helped me push. So there was three people pushing from the back and Lo and behold, we managed to get the car out of the ditch. Alright, so here you see two peaks that suspiciously look like hill forts in that one. Is the one we went to because look at it, it's like flat on top. And there was a cloud sitting on top of that one, so that is the real hill fort up there. But we only went to see that one, so big fail. There's another view of the, the false hill fort, which might well be a, a real hill fort, 
because if you look at the shape, you've got a little homestead down there. Got all this nice. And could you fault us for believing that this was the Hillfort? I mean, it's not the only instance of two Hillforts in one hill. It's like that, but we've done as well. Yeah, but I think that one is not marked as one. So, so my partner noticed some kind of wall going along the edge here, which might just be the for part of the parameters of the fort, which we're going up. All right, so. This looks like the top of Dimiat Hill, so the hill fort should be somewhere over there. Okay, here we go. I think I can already see some of the wall. There you can see the walls again. Let's see the second brighter. There, that's one. That's the other. That's the that's the layers there. Aha! So first thing, here's a ditch running along the parameter of the hill fort. Here's a closer look at the wall. That is definitely a wall. So there's the other wall. It looks a bit like um, the leftover of a house to be honest, it's just the square shapes. But uh, we haven't found any notes on excavations on this fort. But it is a scheduled monument. So this recognized it one. But they haven't exactly um, dug around. And then there's the cairn on top there. Okay, there's not only one, but two cairns on top here. And it looks nice and flat. And here's the magnificent view across the River Forth. So again, we've got the Wallace Monument, we've got Stirling, Stirling Castle. What is that ridge called? I think that's the Campsie Fells. So that could be the Campsie Fells. Yes, that is the Campsie Fells. We've that got... separates Stirlingshire from Strathclyde. Right. Uh, so we've got here the river running along and the Firth of Forth. So. All the way in the distance, that's the Pentland Hills, and then beyond that, that's uh, Edinburgh. Yeah. You can see Arthur's Seat from here. Yes, you can see Arthur's Seat. That's sort of the little bump there, that's Arthur's Seat. That's a really cool looking rock down there. And here's a view of Dumyat Hill. And a little bit of a path. Across the top. Dumyat is apparently an unusually high hill fort, which means that it probably wasn't permanently occupied all year round and would have functioned as a place of refuge in wartime, much like a medieval castle. The name Dumyat comes from the Gaelic Dunmiat, which means Fort of the Mayatai or the Miathi. And the Miathi were the people that lived in this area. So between the Oakle Hills, which this hill fort is on, and the River Avon, which is to the south and separates uh, Lothian from the Falkirk area. In ancient times, this area was known as Manal Gadobin and was part of a much larger area that included uh, Lothian, Berwickshire, and even Northumberland. And Manogadolvin was the borderland between all of the main ethnic groups in Scotland. So you had the Anglo Saxons living in the southeast, the Strathclyde Britons in the southwest, Picts to the east and the north, and the Scots off to the west. This area was quite consistently fought over in the early medieval periods. The earliest references to uh, Mano or the Miathi are during the campaigns of Aidan of Dalriada, 
in the late 6th century. In Dalria, there was the Kingdom of the Scots in Argyll. So the Scots seem to have been the first to invade this area and try and take control of it. Later on, the Scots were defeated at the Battle of Strathcarran by the Strathclyde Britons. And so we can assume the control of the area passed into their hands for a time. But after a certain point, it seems as if Northumbrians were controlling the area because Edgefrith of Northumbria, the Anglo-Saxon kingdom, was recorded as having fought against the Picts in the 670s and 680s. And presumably he would only have been able to have done this if he controlled the area of Manau Gadolin. It's not really clear whether this area stayed under the control of the Northumbrians uh, because the local people had a history of siding with the Picts. So in Roman times, the Maiatai, as the Romans called them, were said to have taken part in a revolt against the Romans and they had the support of the Picts. So this was during the reign of Emperor Septimius Severus and uh, the emperor had to come and put down the revolt personally. It was obviously a very unruly area and also the fact that the Antonine Wall, which is you know, somewhat to the south of here, was built through the territory of the Maiatai meant that the area uh, would have been very difficult to keep under control. But uh, this obviously didn't last forever. We don't really know when the area came under Scottish control, but it would have been some time before 973, uh, because that's when King Edgar of England acknowledged Lothian as part of Scotland. And, you know, we can assume then that this area to the north of Lothian would have been part of Scotland by then. No. Anybody who's afraid of heights, close your eyes. <laughs> oh, look at that. Here. I guess this is what you can see from the road. It's really cool. I almost missed this wall on the other side, it's really large. So, judging by the angle, it would have been right up there on the edge, perhaps, just fortifying the side. And the rock might have been just an extension of the wall because there is no bits of the wall where the big rock was. Okay, so here's even more stones. So I think that's the second layer. You get this outer ring going around the center of the top. And then you've got the outer parameter here with the big stones. And then going up there. I always love when the sun sits on the hills like that. But anyway, so here we have the outer parameter is a bit of an edge. And going all the way around and over there towards the big stones that are pointed out. And then the inner wall, which would have been all the way around the top. We've got one edge coming down here. The other side here, and here's a narrow spot which my partner thinks that could be some kind of gate because then this path leads up to the top. So now we're going up the hill. Here is the hill fort. Here is the top, and you can see the burning of gas going on in the distance, the little torch there.
So here we are back at the car. It was so windy up there at the top of the hill. The door marks the spot. Although somebody added their Starbucks or something order. And this is where we went into the ditch with our car. The full left side of it. You can still see where we were stuck. And this is the door that saved us. Okay. Thanks for watching. I just think this is a really cool bit of the road. With all the, the forest. And it's so narrow as well. There's no way two cars are gonna get past each other. Or what do you think? I think there's a bit of a passing place there, but it would be a narrow squeeze for sure. Oh yeah.